welcome you all for the course banking theory long practice the topic of this session is electronic funds transfer system eft and electronic clearing services ecs see in the recent past the banking sector in india has been working towards providing improved services to its clients by adopting new technologies and introducing faster and improved payment systems as you know pretty well everything is digitized today all the receipts and payments schemes of banks and financial institutions are all done through the digital mode electronic mode in such a way we need to give much importance to electronic payment system electronic receipt system that does come through the electronic funds transfer system eft of banking and uh, these are all based on electronic clearing services too so we need to understand what are all the basic and fundamental ideas by which these things are done and uh, operated by the bankers for the benefit of the customers and what are the nuances what are the basic features and what are the advantages of these schemes which we are going to see under the topic electronic funds transfer system as well as electronic clearing service it has become imperative that banks adopt innovative methods of computerization and communication so as to afford a well designed strong and transparent financial infrastructure backed by efficient payment and settlement systems an efficient payment system plays an important role in the development of the financial sector the electronic clearing service debit and credit and electronic fund transfer system eft are two new payment systems which have been introduced by banks to expedite payments electronically these systems when compared to the existing payment systems are fast minimize the paperwork provides for automatic reconciliation works towards better customer investor service and infrastructure developed for these systems can be used by banks for introducing new payment cash management products for their customers these schemes are beneficial to all the users and the sponsor banks understand the efficient payment system that plays a predominant role in the electronic funds transfer system and uh, the electronic clearing service that helps in another way the payment as well as the receipt system these two are the faster system than that of the traditional system and uh, these two systems are beneficial to all the users of the banking transactions let us see the genesis genesis or gene or the establishment stage of uh, the eft first the eft was launched by the reserve bank of india in the year 1995 the system allows for the instantaneous transfer of funds between instantaneous transfer of funds between the banks and among banks through the electronic mode the system was introduced with a view to modernizing the funds transfer mechanism within the country in a less time consumption rbi acts as an intermediate between the sending bank and the receiving bank and affects interbank funds transfer the current funds transfer mechanism is time consuming and costly whereas this system is less time consuming and less costly the primary modes of funds transfer are demand draft pay orders and telegraphic transfer the demand draft and pay order system is paper based under the present uh, dispensation uh, the remitter after purchasing demand draft from a bank branch remitter after purchasing a demand draft from a bank branch dispatches the same by post to the beneficiary the beneficiary in turn lodges the claim to his bank for collection and clearing this processing takes about uh, 10 days however in case of a telegraphic transfer although funds reach the beneficiary either on the same day or the next or in subsequent days or in two days it is incumbent that both the remitter and the beneficiary would have to be account holders of the same bank 
If they are of different uh, banks, this again entails a lot of paper processing, which is obviously a time consuming activity and exercise. Under the proposed EFT arrangements, customers can request their bank branches to remit funds to the designated customers, irrespective of bank affiliation to the beneficiary. The receiving bank acknowledges every transaction it receives after crediting the beneficiary's account. Of course, it is the, the responsibility of receiving branch so as to account every activity. The acknowledgement particulars reach the sending branch as an inward message on day three of the EFT processing cycle. This would help the sending branch to have the precise information as to when the beneficiary's account was credited. These are all the genesis, gene or establishment or uh, the framework under which the EFT system was launched, evolved. Let's see further the meaning of the EFT system. A method of fund transfer mechanism which facilitates transfer of funds between bank and users is called electronic funds transfer, EFT. The scheme of EFT was introduced by the RBI with a view to helping the banks offer their customers money transfer service from account to account of any bank branch to any other bank branch, both intercity or intracity. The method allows for both interbank and intrabank funds transfer in the name of money transfer between the branches of the same bank. Right? This allows very faster and very speedier transaction which takes place in both the customer as well as uh, the banker's place so that it will be finished in a matter of uh, minutes or matter of hours in a day right let's see the steps in EFT the electronic fund transfer system that involves the different steps First of all, one who wants to have such EFT has to make an application to the bank branch wherein he has an account. Making an application. The first step in sending money through an electronic mode is the remitter has to fill in the EFT application form. Is that the remitter has to fill in the EFT application form. Details of the beneficiary are to be furnished in the application. By this, the remitter authorizes the branch to remit a specified amount to the specified beneficiary by raising a debit to the remitter's account. Right? Once a remitter proposes and authorizes a branch, branch will do everything and uh, debit uh, the remitter's account. The next step in the process of uh, EFT is data preparation. The next step in the process of EFT mechanism is that the remitting branch makes a schedule and sends the duplicate of the EFT application form to the service branch. This is done for EFT data preparation. The branch that is equipped with a computer system carries out the task of data preparation as per the specified format. Data transmission. The service branch prepares the EFT data file, this is done by using a software package supplied by RBA. No other software package is to be used except the software package which is recommended and sent by, offered by RBA. The file is then transmitted simultaneously to the local offices of RBA and the local RBA national clearing cell NCC by the evening of the transaction date. Debiting remitting banks. The files of information transmitted by the service branches are consolidated at the RBI remitting center. The files of transactions are sorted citywise. The center then prepares vouchers for debiting the remitting banks on day one itself. Citywise files are transmitted to the RBI offices at the respective destination centers. The next step is crediting the receiving banks. The destination centers of the RBI receive the files 
from the originating centers. These are then consolidated and sorted bankwise. Bankwise remittance data files are transmitted to banks on day one itself. Subsequently, the bankwise vouchers are prepared for crediting the receiving bank accounts the next day morning. Right? Then crediting beneficial. The destination centers of the RBI process the remittance files transmitted by RBI on the second day. The credit reports are then forwarded to the destination branches for crediting the beneficiaries accounts. To the destination branches for crediting the beneficiaries account. So here only the beneficiary gets credited. Then task at the service branch. There are two types of task. One is at service branch, the other is at uh, the beneficiary branch. Following task take place the service branch where the EFT transaction passes through for uh, inward remittances. What are the following? What I am going to say is the following points. Receipt of uh, transaction messages from RBI, EFT center through RBI net by way of downloading at the computer system installed in service branch of the respective bank. This is one. Provision of information to the concerned branch by the service branch regarding the receipt of credit transaction in the beneficiary account specified in the message. Sending of credit advice to both the service branch and the beneficiary branch. These are all the tasks that are to be completed at service branch. Next, task at beneficiary branch. Following task take place. What are the following? What I am going to say is the following. The take place at the beneficiary branch where the EFT transaction passes through for inward remittances. Beneficiary branch acting as per the instructions given by the service branch and affording credit to beneficiary's account as per the advice. Once the advice is received from the service branch, the beneficiary branch will do the credit to beneficiary's account. Sending acknowledgement copy immediately to the service branch. Copy of the credit advice same day to the service branch. Immediately on the day itself. These are all the steps in EFT process, electronic fund transfer system. Let's go to the next. There are some limit prescribed by Reserve Bank of India. The maximum limit on the amount of individual transaction permitted for fund transfer per transaction is rupees 5 lakhs. And uh, how do they get acknowledged? The receiving branch acknowledges every transaction it receives after crediting the beneficiary's account. The acknowledgement particulars reach the remitting branch as an inward message on day 3 of the EFT processing cycle at the maximum. The remitting branch will therefore have precise information as to when the beneficiary's account was credited. But nowadays it is getting credited immediately and debited to the account and processed by the bank in minutes time. These are all the, at the initial stage. Then electronic fund transfer electronic fund transfer for which what are all the guidelines given by reserve bank of india that's what we need to understand eft is uh, not so easy it has to be permitted authorized approved uh, by reserve bank of india for every bank but of course for all banks who have started their business have been approved by reserve bank of india but they are to follow such guidelines, whatever issued by the RBI, then and there. Right. Let us see one by one now. Actually, the mechanism of EFT that starts from uh, the fund remitting customer at one stage, fund remitting customer who approaches his service branch and the service branch act on behalf of the fund remitting customer and approaches the beneficiary bank to whom the fund is going to be transferred or transferred. Then beneficiary bank will ask the fund receiving customer to get received. So these are the mechanism parts. First part fund remitting customer, second is service bank and third is beneficiary bank and four is funds receiving customer. So in this mechanism, the RBI instructed all the banks to do 
the electronic fund transfer system. In that way, we need to understand the guidelines consequently. Right. Consequently, uh, what are the guidelines to be followed? One is electronic media. The entire operation of the system between service branch and RBA is performed through the electronic media. Electronic media only, digital media only. No physical movement of instruments from one center to another is necessary. RBA net is being used for transmitting EFT messages. RBA net is used for transmitting the EFT, electronic fund transfer messages. This is number one guidelines. So, according to this guidelines, every bank has to adopt the electronic media prescribed by the RBI. Funds Settlement Facility RBI undertakes to provide interbank fund settlement facility. This task is carried out by debiting the remitting bank and crediting the destination bank. Then remittance messages. RBI pulls the remittance message from all banks at a center and arranges to send them to designated branches at destination centers. The flow of messages take place between the branch to service branch and then to NCC and vice versa. Then service provider, RBA has made that communication between branches and service branches may be on paper format till branch creates adequate computer communication infrastructure till the bank branch that creates adequate computer communication infrastructure unless those structures are uh, structured or established the process of uh, EFT will not be easy. For this purpose RBA acts as a service provider as well as a system regulator. These are all the guidelines that RBA issues then and there to the commercial banks to follow RBI's uh, rules and regulations. There are some benefits that the electronic funds transfer system offers always. What are all the benefits? Number one, the efficient mode. The FT is an efficient mode of funds transfer across various banks. This enables banks to provide interbank telegraphic transfer, TT, interbank and interbank branch telegraphic transfer TT and interbank TT service. Further, this technique makes reconciliation automatic. Once the telegraphic transfer is made or the service is offered, automatic reconciliation will be done in the accounts. Then innovative products. EFT system can be used as a launching pad with which Banks can introduce new payment or cash management products such as e-check for their customers. Less workload. The use of EFT system would significantly reduce the number of outstation checks issued by customers. Consequently, the service load on banks could be reduced over a period of time. Service load on banks could also be reduced or curtailed. Cut short time over a period of time. These are all the benefits that are offered by electronic funds transfer system. We need to understand what is EFT system and how is it distinct from the traditional system also. The EFT system versus traditional system. To transfer funds under the traditional mode of funds transfer, the remitter has to obtain the instruments such as demand draft, mail transfer and telegraphic transfer from the bank. The instruments are then sent to the beneficiary by post that in turn lodges the instruments for collection, clearing and payment. This process takes a long time as many as 10 days in the case of demand draft. In the case of telegraphic transfer, fund reaches the beneficiary either on the same day or the next day. But it requires that both the remitter and the beneficiary would have to be account holders of the same bank. If they are customers of different banks, 
different servicing banks. A good deal of paper processing is required. There should be a proper, good, efficient, effective uh, paper deal. Unless otherwise these services cannot be availed by the customers, by the banks offered. In the traditional system I am talking about. Whereas the electronic fund transfer system introduced by the RBI, on the other hand, is an interbank oriented system whereby the RBI acts as an intermediary between the remitting bank and the receiving bank and assist in the interbank fund transfer EFT. The customers of banks can request their respective branches to remit funds to the designated customers irrespective of bank affiliation of the beneficiary. So this is the benefit of EFT system. Let's come to understand now the requirements for using the EFT system very carefully and efficiently. For the EFT system to work efficiently, we need, we require at the bank level first the following items. What are the items? At the bank level, I am saying not at the customer level. One is computer system. It is not necessary for all branches to have computer systems, but branches can send the remittance details to their service branch in paper format. The copies of the EFT application forms submitted by the remitting customers accompanied by a remittance scroll. The service branch will make a data entry and transmit the funds transfer information electronically to the local NCC. But if a branch has computer facility, it can transmit funds transfer information electronically to its service branch either on a floppy disk or through a network. Today, nobody has uh, the floppy disk and uh, compact disk at all. They are doing electronically. This would, of course, uh, minimize the data entry work at the service branch. Right? Next, additional organizational structure. But we need additional organizational structure to maintain all computer devices and systems. What are they? Each participating bank has to identify a branch at the respective center to act as the link point for transmitting and receiving all messages. The service branches, main branches of banks who have been coordinating the check and the check clearing work are in the best position to discharge this role. So no additional organization infrastructure is to be created. No additional structure but a structure that should be created for handling those transactions via the digital mode. The service charges, according to the Indian Banks Association, the service charges which would be rupees 25 per transaction to be shared between remitting bank rupees 10, RBA rupees 5 and receiving bank rupees 10. This is uh, the service charges for those transactions between the banks normally fixed and uh, minimally fixed but uh, it has been changing according to the conditions and uh, uh, the decisions taken by the Reserve Bank of India then and there. This is a normal charge that's why I have taken this and I have shown you and I have conveyed you that this is only the normal charge not the present charge once it was established it has been introduced. So with this, I hope you would have understood uh, the electronic fund transfer. Let's go to the next topic, electronic clearing services, ECS. See, you know about electronic clearing services, the new method of payment, uh, right? The genesis gene or establishment we should understand in what way it has been established and what are the purpose for which it has been done. Under the new method of payment called Electronic Clearing Service, ECS, the institutions having to make a large number of payments such as uh, interest or dividend or even the salary to the workers can directly deposit the amount into the bank accounts of the shareholders, depositors and employees, investors without having to issue them paper instruments, need not issue check, need not send uh, warrant, dividend warrant. 
need not uh, send check for payment of uh, salary or wage or the remuneration packages that can directly be transferred to their account using the ECS electronic clearing service without having to issue them paper instrument this can be done the scheme benefits all concerned benefit institutions can make direct payment and beneficial to all the people for example the corporate bodies need not print and dispatch numerous paper instruments as far as the banks are concerned the new systems that helps in reconciling figures automatically the system will be highly beneficial to the clearing system whereby it is not required to deal with large number of paper instruments the ultimate beneficiaries will be the shareholders depositors etc who would get the credit directly into their bank account on the due date right beneficial to persons get direct credit to their account there are some distinction between the physical clearing system as well as uh, the electronic clearing services or electronic clearing system what are the issues under the physical clearing system bulk and repetitive payments such as interest dividend warrants etc are paper based this involves printing of warrants in costly micr format dispatching them by post and reconciliation thereof after payment by the collecting banks in addition the following major difficulties are experienced under the physical system of clearing what are such issues that's what we are going to see now one is paper based the requirement of an expensive administrative machinery for printing dispatching and reconciliation operational bottlenecks resulting from bunching of a large number of instruments in clearing with the consequent pressures on the check processing system danger of loss of instruments in transit and their fraudulent encashment that also happens this is customer botheration almost botheration on the part of the customer to keep track of the receipt of the instrument and deposit of the same in the bank customer is responsible to search and also to track where is the transaction that happens where it reaches how it reaches how it reaches the destination and all these things the customer has to be very careful so that it is customer botheration and customer centric monotonous and uh, error prone nature of the processing work involved in such large volume of instruments it is monotonous and error prone nature once uh, the volume of uh, transactions should be huge and uh, large undue strain on the check clearing system the strain is uh, unexpected and uh, undesirable also these are all the issues in the physical clearing system let us see what is ecs credit and what are, what is ecs debit what is ecs credit and what is ecs debit ecs as used with respect to credit clearing refers to a system of uh, payment undertaken by banks and financial institutions and uh, others whereby direct deposit of a large number of payments such as interest dividend warrants into the bank accounts of the shareholders depositors investors and others is facilitated without having to issue the paper instruments that is what ecs ecs credit then ecs debit ecs as used with respect to debit clearing refers to a system of collection undertaken by public utility services such as electricity telephones insurances etc with a view of effecting periodic and repetitive payments by direct debit to customer accounts the object is to minimize paper transactions and thereby increasing customer satisfaction ecs debit envisages large number of debits and credits only one credit only one large number of debits and only one credit this is ecs debit let's see the features of uh, what you call the ecs system there are several features of the ecs of the 
banks and introduced by the Reserve Bank of India. It is with a view to minimize various difficulties what we discussed already. What are the features? The operation cycle of ECS credit. The operation of the electronic clearing system as regards credit is mapped out as uh, preparing the payment uh, data. Payment data is prepared by the institution called the user which has to make payments to a large number of customers. The data is prepared on a magnetic media that is tape or uh, floppy and submitted to its banker called the sponsor bank. So operation cycle of ECS credit in which uh, preparation of payment uh, data is very important. And uh, presenting such a payment data prepared. The payment data is then presented by the sponsor bank to the local bankers clearing house. Authorized by the sponsor bank, the manager of the clearing house debits the sponsor bank's account and credits the destination bank's accounts. That is the accounts of the banks where the beneficiaries of uh, the transactions maintain their accounts. The continuing features of uh, operation cycle of ECS credit is processing by clearing house. On the receipt of authorization, the clearing house processes the data and works out an interbank funds settlement. Branch wise credit reports indicating the beneficiary details such as the names of the branches where the accounts are maintained, the names of the beneficiaries, account type, account numbers and the respective amounts are also furnished by the clearing house to service branches of the destination banks. Then service branches then pass the advices to the concerned branches of the bank which will credit the beneficiary's account on the appointed date on the appointed date. These are all the features in the case of operation cycle of electronic clearing service credit. Then we go and see the features of operation cycle of uh, ECS debit. The operation of the electronic clearing system as regards debit is mapped out as uh, what we are going to deal now. One is the mandate. What is mandate? The first step in the operation of ECS as regards debit is obtaining of mandate for making payments on behalf of customers. The mandate is obtained for making periodic and repetitive payments to utility companies, banks, institutions receiving periodic or repetitive payments towards electricity bills, telephone bills, loan installments, insurance premium, etc. The mandate provides details such as name, account number, name of the bank, branch, etc. duly certified by the bank concern. The next is preparation of data. As you know pretty well, the ECS debiting branches have to prepare the data or presentation. The user organization that provides transaction data on electronic media on the basis of the details furnished in the mandates. The data is then submitted to the local clearing house through its sponsor bank. Then the necessary action will be taken by the clearing house. The local clearing house processes the data after a due validation of the same. The interbank settlements are arrived at and necessary bank wise reports are generated. Then debiting bank account. Destination banks accounts with the clearing house are debited by the NCC National Clearing Corporation. National Clearing Corporation. We used to say NCC in so many pages of uh, this lesson. You please understand the expansion of NCC is National Clearing Corporation. A consolidated credit is afforded simultaneously to the sponsored bank's account. The clearinghouse then furnishes the bank wise and branch wise reports to the service branches of the destination banks. Then action by service branches is required. Branch wise reports are forwarded by the service branches to the respective branches for debiting the accounts of the customers with the amount indicated therein. So the action by service branches will be completed and this is also one of the feature of uh, operation cycle of ECS debit. 
let's go and see the benefits of ECS now. The electronic layering service offers the following benefits. What are they? To the users, to the users, the ECS offers different benefits. One is cost savings. ECS is undoubtedly is a cost saving method, cost saving mode. The cost administration presently being incurred for printing of paper instruments in MICR format and uh, dispatching them by UPC, registered or speed posts, etc. that are saved enormously. For instance, ECS would be beneficial to all corporates which have to make periodic dispersals like dividend, interest, pension, salary, etc. The use of ECS could bring down their administration burden and uh, administration cost to a bare minimum, to utmost extent of minimum. Similarly, the automatic debiting to the accounts of mandated customers has the effect of cutting down the procedural delay also. There is no time delay. Cost savings and time savings. No transit loss that happens. Another major advantage of the ECS is that it precludes the possibility of any loss of instruments in transit. The system also seeks to eliminate fraudulent encashment of cash fraudulent encashment of such kind of instruments. Automatic reconciliation is another benefit of ECS. The great advantage of the ECS is that the system facilitates automatic reconciliation of transactions. The ECS cycle produces a transaction completion report which is sent to the user institution. The user gets an electronic data file from its bank with the date of payment and bank's confirmation thereon. Then efficient cash management. ECS allows for the efficient management of cash for the user. Thus it would be sufficient for the user to make the funds available only on the specified date. Similarly, there is ensured and faster collection of bills by the companies, thus facilitating better cash management by them. Then better customer service. ECS facilitates better customer service also. The system paves way for the best companies in the world to pay to their shareholders, investors and customers. Further, the payments are made on the due date. Similarly, ECS makes possible effortless receipts and obviates the need for visiting the bank for depositing the dividend or interest warrant. Also the customer knows from whom and uh, when payment has been received through ECS. Then convenient mode. The ECS offers a convenient mode of clearing both payment and uh, receipts on the part of the public. The real beneficiaries could be the members of public like the investing public or the payers of bills to utilities or installments and such dues to others. It has away with the necessary of the customers having to move out and about or stand in long queues. Further, they no longer have to fear loss of instruments in transit and there is no risk of fraudulent encashment too. Then some of the issues of uh, ECS. Although the ECS has been introduced with much fanfare designed to ensure faster and accelerated payment and collection method, there are many reasons as to why the scheme of electronic clearing system is becoming so popular. Following are some of the reasons, right? Lukewarm support shown by corporates, individuals, institutions, etc. in availing the ECS and ECS largely concentrated in the metro centers as there is a little awareness about the scheme in all levels. They are not concentrating on the rural level but now it has come down to the earth of rural level too. Inadequate services, inadequate services extended by banks regarding the information on passbook entries of payment and collection. The existence of a strong preference among the people for making payments in cash rather than through ECS. These are all the issues of ECS now getting clear. Let's see.
the further information about uh, the ACS. There is a limit which has been fixed by the Reserve Bank of India. Reserve Bank of India has prescribed a present limit of 5 lakhs rupees maximum in the case of credit ECS and rupees 1 lakh in the case of debit ECS. There is no minimum limit. Right? Then service charges. Service charges as applicable to credit ECS are as follows. One, to promote electronic banking culture, a highly concessional service charge structure has been adopted. For the present uh, user, corporate institution is required to pay to the clearing house through the sponsor bank rupees 1.50 per instrument, of which rupees uh, 50 would remain with the clearing house and rupee 1 would be credited to the destination bank. However, charges to be paid by the user to sponsor bank have to be mutually agreed. No charges would be levied by the destination bank branch for crediting the investor or customer's account. Service charges as applicable to debit ECS are while utility companies are levied nominal service charges rupees 3, sponsor bank rupee 1, clearing house rupee 0 0.50 and destination bank will have 1.50 per transaction. Such a service for the customers opting for the scheme is free. These are all the service charges. Then acknowledgement. In the case of a credit ECS, the responsibility of advising the investor customer about the amount and due date of payment rests with the user institution. Responsibility is rest with the user institution, not with uh, the serving institution. On crediting the investor customer's account, the destination bank branch would indicate the source of credit in the statement of account, the passbook, etc. For an example, ECS uh, UTI, ECS Tata Finance, ECS ICICI, or ECS HDFC, etc., are electronic clearing system with the bank's name for the case of uh, the acknowledgement like. Right. With this, I hope you would have understood uh, the electronic clearing system. So, broadly speaks, we have seen two headings under uh, this uh, lesson or uh, one is EFT electronic fund transfer system and the two is electronic clearing service ECS. So hope you would have understood both of the lessons and uh, you would be applying for the condition arise and also in your examination. Wish all the best and take care.